today we're going to be starting a new run as this small little realm here, the Igbo realm in, um, in Central Africa on the coast there. My name is Martin, this is StratChat and uh, welcome to a new playthrough. Before we really get started, I just wanted to thank anybody that's making comments um, about Friday's uh, request from me for sort of like tips and advice on, on how to go forward. I'm making this really before that's actually launched, so if you're expecting me to comment on it, uh, I won't be able to today. But I will talk about that feedback in, our, uh, in the episode that will be published on Friday. Uh, so now more about what we're going to be doing today. So what I really feel like doing is is kind of kind of just sort of uh, feel feelings about how much I used to enjoy sort of playing Ireland, starting out with sort of one county, possibly two counties, having to to forge your uh, your, your first kingdom, um, build it, and, uh, uh, and that's what I kind of want to do. And kind of Africa have some of those Irish vibes in a way because as you can you know if I still zoom back you can see there's a lot of very very small realms. Of course, there are some big kingdoms, you know, uh, out on the, the the edges there, a long way away from from we are to start with. And there's this kingdom Iffy, which is obviously quite powerful at the beginning. But you know, when you're starting out as an Irish count, you get that. You know, you're on the you're, you're right next to the English realm, aren't you? You're right next to um, the the North Welsh realm, which is which is which is quite strong. But it's an opportunity as a tribal ruler to just kind of like. T take a few places, get your first duchy title, uh, build it up further, vassalize a couple of people, build your first kingdom title. It's kind of quite interesting, it's quite exciting. And of course, the religions are very different down there. The culture is, is very different. And we're going to be able to explore some of that. It's also very, very basic. It's very, very simple. Like typically, you can build sort of two, two regiments um, at, the be at the beginning of the game and you're a long, long way away from having the capability of doing much more than that. I suppose you become a duke, you'd be able to build an additional one, become a king, another one. But you know, in terms of the, the innovations, you're a long, long way away from the, the, the kind of great feudal kingdoms that you, you get in, um, in, certainly in Europe and in India, for example. Um, so it's going to be a long, long, long old job. The other thing that I want to do is I don't want to use the easy method of feudalizing, which is when you, um, you you find somebody to make, and you make them your liege lord, you, you, you become vassalized to them, are able to become feudal, and then you fight your kind of independence um, war. I don't want to do that. I want to do it inherently. This kingdom, let me just uh, identify this kingdom. Igbo Benyu is going to be my kingdom and it's going to feudalize entirely under its own steam. I'm going to spread my culture, which is the Igbo culture, into all of that kingdom and indeed my religion, which already covers a fair bit. Not all of the, some of the kingdom goes up here, so we're going to have this Orison uh, religion, we're going to spread that. And we might change that religion to some extent, like we might adapt it, um, but what we won't do is, is move out of it, that the, we can stay within it the whole of the time, we're going to make that kingdom um, share our culture and our religion, and we are not going to spread it any further, so beyond that, if we expand into further realms, they're going to be kind of like subject peoples, if you like. They're going to be people with a different culture. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to build up the development within this kingdom really, really high. Um, and the way to do that, I think, is to keep the culture quite contained. Yeah, because I've only got a few counties where I've got to increase the development very, very high. And just kind of like see where it goes, really. I mean, clearly... I want to be an emperor, and it might be that at some point in the future, that you know we conquer far, far wealthier lands. It might be that we'll we'll consider, you know, far into the future, changing that and perhaps moving, moving the capital somewhere else, changing culture, changing religion, adopting, you know, Islam or one of one of the other sort of like major religions or something. But for the certainly the first few generations. We're going to be totally kind of nationalistic, loyal to our culture, loyal to our religion, uh, and just spreading it within within our own kingdom. Uh, I'm going to do a character uh, build for this. So um, it seems to me that we are in the tribal era, 
Uh, we've got a very, very ambitious uh, young ruler um, of the Igbo here. I think he needs to be very, very good at military. This is going to be this is going to be like a kind of Alexander the Great type character, military genius, conquers all before him. I'm going to try and give him a little bit of diplomacy too, because that's always useful in this kind of situation, especially when you're playing tribal. But I'm not going to be doing very much um, uh, sort of espionage stuff, spying stuff. So I'm not going to be very good at the intrigue. Um, who knows? Subsequent, um, you know, my children, or whatever, you know, maybe they'll have different skills. Um, I'm going to be doing that, but I'm also going to be trying to give a character with quite good learning because the Igbo and indeed their religion. I'm sorry, I don't know what they're called yet. The Orizon religion. Um, favors uh, has a number of reasons that it favors people with with high high learning. So military learning and diplomacy. I think diplomacy is going to be just about okay. Military is going to be the key thing. Anyway, we're going to um, create a character. Interestingly, in this part of the world, it doesn't very ma much matter whether we go for male or female. I think they do have a male. Male line of descent um, initially, but the culture and the religion allow for it to be very, very easily uh, changed to to equal. But um, you know, we're we're good with a, with a, with a male. I'm happy to go with a randomised sexual orientation, or obviously keeping the culture and the faith. Namoki, I quite like that name. Let's go in Namoki. Going to be military, so I'm going to stick with the old snake there, and I like the uh, the realm um, the realm banner there as well. Igbo forever. We're going to be very loyal to our um, culture. Right, I'm going to go for a 16 year old. Uh, we've basically got 300 points here so we're obviously going to go for a military trait. Okay so I'm going to try and save a little bit of money, uh, so a little bit of points here. So if, if you think about this, you get 8 marshal for 80 points. That's basically 10 points for each uh, point of marshal skill. A skill tactician only costs us 40, but we get 6. So it seems to me that that's better value. I know it slows down the rate of gaining the, um, you know, the perks, but that feels to me like a good, a good kind of balance. I think we have to go for Brave here. We have to go for Brave because that's kind of the kind of character that we're, uh, we're looking for here. Somebody who's going to be busy fighting in battle. I also like Patient. I like Patient because it's going to increase my learning. But like Brave, it also is virtuous to Orisons, so that's going to be giving me some additional faith. And I think quite often we might be attacking our own our own faith, which I think costs faith, doesn't it? If you attack your own faith in a kind of a... Uh, I, th I think that that costs faith. So that's going to be getting us some more, more faith. Now the other one that would would be Just, but I'm not sure that I want to be Just. Yeah, so Just would give me uh, stewardship... Um, low intrigue but would improve my learning the problem with just is they don't like you taking things away from people not really think about it. do you know what okay we're going to go for this this is this is interesting so this is making us a perfect orison character okay so all these these are the three traits that are virtuous to orisons we want to be a virtuous uh, character and it's giving us good marshal it's giving us acceptable learning because just improves our learning uh, patience improves our learning. We're going to do a bit more for our learning later on. Okay, I quite like this miracle worker. So this again, virtuous to Orisons, a uh, massive improvement to our learning, which is now up at 12. We're good in both of these areas. Um, the one thing that's very, very poor really is my uh, diplomacy. I think probably could do with stewardship being up at 10. That'll give me an extra domain. And I think just for defensive purposes, we probably want to improve our intrigue a little bit. There we go. So, um, so we've got a character who is pretty good at war, pretty good at learning, because he's going to quickly become the head of the uh, of the culture. Um, passable diplomacy, actually reasonably good stewardship. Um, let's, I think, just just launch him and see see what happens. So I think this is a two county. I think he has two counties. Uh, I think there might be four or five counties in the um, in the duchy. 
Uh, yeah, it looks like five. So I think we only need one before we could potentially be in a position to to claim the the, the duchy to form the duchy. Let's launch. So the first thing I want to do is look at the, at the religion and the culture. So, so esotericism, eso, eso, esotericism. So essentially this is where we're benefiting from the miracle worker trait that we have. It also means that the wise man trait is a little bit more common if you have the learning focus. So that's worth bearing in mind, thinking about perhaps my successor. So reincarnation gives us better conversion. I think that's the key thing here. Um, it means we can convert places to our religion a little bit more quickly. Um, also that our, our children, uh, by random chance, might uh, be associated with uh, an ancestor and increasing their kind of piety. Uh, I think that's the, the work, how that works. Uh, we get more prestige from our level of splendor. So it's worth, once we kind of get to having a royal court, to build up our splendor. We've got a better um, long reign bonus than other cultures. And we get an additional bonus on the successful completion of a pilgrimage. Well, look, I'm a very, very holy character, so I'm playing this a little bit. So I'm trying to play this character kind of in role, if you like, role playing the character. So um, I think going on pilgrimage is something that he's going to want to be doing quite early on in life. Divorce is allowed, concubines is allowed. So there's the really interesting question of, do you want to like just have millions of children, um, you know, manage it with the problems that that comes with, with associated with that, with um, the the succession, but but you know the great benefits to having a huge family. So I'm gonna I'm gonna work on that one and think about that. Okay, so a slight reduction in income from par arms and pacification, but more popular. We can use either males or females for our clerics and they can marry and I can sack them and get better ones which is really really brilliant so the first of these actually in our kingdom and uh, not that it matters um, as long as they're controlled by horizons we gain the benefits so the benefits we have is a uh, plus one learning per level of devotion that's going to be really really key later on and um, additional piety so I should be absolutely milking the piety. So I think the, the the fact is that at some point we're going to want to reform this religion. And to be fair, these beliefs are not they're not like game breaking, are they? They're, they're they're very mediocre. So I think if we reform it in the future, you know, we could we could potentially uh, build a really really interesting, really really interesting religion, which we can spread over you know all over Africa, um, that might give us some. So it's our kingdom some massive benefits. So let's look at the Igbo. So it's worth also saying, so we share that religion with um, our own duchy and a big area over to the left, which is mostly covered by that kingdom called Ifi. Um, others uh, uh, consider us hostile. So I think once we start coming in contact with these people, it's not gonna be a benefit to how well we get on with them. So let's have a look at the culture. Now, Niger Delta heritage means that we, I think these, if, if you look at this kind of area here, let me just make myself a little bit smaller. I always forget to do this. Yeah, the, the Niger Delta heritage area covers Igbo, but also the Yoruba, the Ui, um, the, the Edo's. They're all in the same kind of cultural heritage group as us. It means that we, that we can't merge our culture with those. But just north of us, I think the Nupe can, this is Central African heritage, so it might be worth, because obviously that's where we're planning to be going. Once we have one of those, it will be worth looking at whether it's worth forming a hybrid culture. Um, I mean, we would also automatically get Saal Horseman, for example. Um, so it, it's always nice if you get a bit more than that, but, but you know, it'd be worth looking at Saal Horseman and see if it's worth merging the cultures for that um, for that person for that reason we have um, bush hunting which means that we can uh, recruit bush hunters which are better archers um, we have some benefits uh, when fighting or some commanders have personality traits which help them in jungle and in dry terrain um, we are better at um, we have better supply limits in jungle terrain our levy size is better in jungle terrain. Um, so 
we got some advantage in jungle terrain that other cultures don't have. Hidden cities. So fort levels for tribes in jungle is plus one. Fort levels in castles in jungle is plus two. So we're tribes, so we're going to have plus one for a lot of our castles. Our development growth is also much, much higher. Now, jungle tends to be very poor development growth, but actually it's pretty good um, in this... Um, if 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 if, it, if it's jungle in this case because we get plus thirty five percent, and a reduction in the cost of buildings, which is which is really nice. So, all of this is kind of like making us much much more effective as a sort of a jungle culture. So prisons are more likely to accept recruitment, and they're going to like us for doing it. So it's certainly worth scouring through the prisoners and making sure we pick out the best. We also get better knights from invite champions decision. I never use the invite champions decision, so I, I think I, I'll have to do that in this game, won't I, to see what happens. The grant pardon interaction um, gives much more positive opinion and a strong hook, so that's something to be looking out for. It's easy to miss that that's something that you're able to do. This chap here is the leader of our culture, but he won't be for long. I think I only have to get to, he's only got one county, I only have to get to two. In fact, I have two counties, but this one down here is in the Edo culture. So if I convert that, I would immediately become the head of our culture, or if I took over another, another county. Just see how far away we are. He's looking for onagers. I'm not going to be looking for onagers all around here. We're not going to be finding difficult castles to take. It's going to be quite a low priority for me. Plenary assemble is, is good because it allows you to enact limited crown authority and you can take counties off people, although I'm a just character. That's going to cause me some stress. So this is the one that's special to our culture. West African canoes It's going to take five... 114 years at the current rate to get that. I think we can forget about that early game. One, two, three, four. So essentially there are four there. Um, in order to become feudal, I think we need 10. Yeah, I think it's 10. So yeah, we really need to be a learning leader and, and start picking up some of these. And I think that definitely kind of like merging with another culture at some point has to happen if we're going to kind of like skip ahead a little bit and, and get a few of these. Okay, I think the first thing to do is think about getting married. Now I can have four counties as I am. I definitely want a wife about my age, but with really, really good tra uh, characteristics. Am I even gonna go for, I could always look for inheritable traits with um, with a concubine, let's find a really, really good match for the kingdom, for, for ruling the kingdom with me, a real partner in to rule. So this lady's a little bit older than me, seems quite trustful, she's fickle, but she's also trusting and diligent. Uh, she's Igbo and Oriza, which I quite like the idea from a role play point of view. She's got very, very high stewardship. I think that would be really, really good. I can also flick her to, to military where she would contribute perhaps one or two points to, to my marshal in uh, times of war. Um, and she's got a good diplomacy too. She's not amazing on the learning, which would have been nice. Let's just see. Yeah, I think we're gonna marry her. Obviously, Marshall, we're going to be going to war practically straight away, so we're going to go straight for... Do we go straight for this, or do we go for the control growth? I think I'm going to be able to win these battles easily, so I'm going to go for just pl the authority focus, plus one Marshall, but a big increase in uh, control growth, because I'm going to be taking counties quite quickly. Now, it's interesting to see how in this culture we've obviously got you know, basically 50-50 men and women fulfilling our uh, knight roles. In fact, our best one is this lady here is also my steward. She's probably a much better knight than she is steward. I think what I need to be doing is looking for um, unmarried courtiers. So because this culture is different, I don't need to sort by male or female. All of these people, all of these unmarried people can bring all 
uh, it, it, all different types of people. So, for example, I can use a man to attract someone who would make a good steward because I think I'm right. Uh, it's probably just worth, yeah, they, a woman can be a steward or a marshal or a knight. So there's actually much less difference between the male and the female characters. And let's have a look, see if we can use these to attract anybody of use. So this is great. This is like the best court shaman. Uh, so I'm going to bring him to us. And he's going to replace this absolutely awful court shaman. Okay, this young man here, very, very young. I think we're going to bring him in as the chancellor. Marry him off to our, our current marshal here. Right, this chap, who are we going to marry him to? This is the best spy master we've seen so far. So let's bring her in to marry this man here. And Milado is going to make quite a good steward. Okay. This chap looks like he might make a good physician. So he's going to marry Isiua. It's matrilineal, which is perfect. If Waco, we're looking for people with uh, prowess. 15, this will make him immediately our best knight at the moment. Zinma. Prowess. 16, she'll be our best knight. Quite happy to leave a couple spare, which is also pretty powerful. Let's go for it. Okay, so we've we have now got a whole series of characters coming and really improve our situation. Let's have a quick look at our military. We can have two regiments. We've got this one regiment of bush hunters. Might as well have them at full strength. Yeah, I think we we'll just get as many bush hunters as we can. And I think pretty clearly we should go on a hunt so that we can get the last uh, the last the last lot. Now, if we go back down here, so this is this is our duchy. We need to be randomly attacking local people. Uh, this chap has got 490. By the time we've built up our force here, we'd be able to take him, him, him. No problem. And that will give us one, two, three, four, five counties, by which time we'll obviously have a wife. We can probably rule them all ourselves. Right, let's look at characters. What? Okay, so we want... Right, we want the steward to convert that county. He's going to be on religious relations. Nope, we'll have this lady on um, foreign affairs because that'll be increasing our prestige. Spy master on defensive. Marshal improving our commanders. Okay, so I did not know that this was a thing. So obviously, adopt feudal ways, this is what we are uh, used to doing with an organised faith. But there's also the West African pagan. Where I have to remain an unreformed faith. And the difficult thing to achieve here, I mean, still we've got the 70% of all military and civic innovations. We still have to get to 10 innovations. Um, and your capital is in Western Africa, has at least a don't understand. But you only need four of these. So development of 10 is difficult, but you've only got to achieve four of these. That's a lot easier than this one, where you have to get to a development of 10. OK, I didn't realise that this was a thing. So we are we are going to need to start working our way up towards absolute tribal authority. That's going to take 30 years. We have to have an unreformed faith. So I think we'll consider reforming our faith after we adopt feudal ways, West African pagan. OK, that's what we're, we're going to be doing. That That's really interesting. So we're going to have to put a cut in there. Um, actually, I was interrupted. Uh, some of you who watch the channel regularly may may know my mum has uh, dementia. I have to look after her, and she was she was getting up, so I needed to stop anyway. Um, but I think you know we're getting to twenty five minutes, probably probably long enough, and, and and needed to it needed to stop anyway. It's also quite a good place to stop because we're about to begin the game. Um, really, that first episode, it's, well, it's, it's an analysis, isn't it? It's, uh, it, it, it's just talking about the culture, it's talking about the religion, it's talking about the political situation, it's talking about our goals and our aims and how we're going to improve the military, taking some early moves. And, and I think it's a really, really good place to stop anyway. So Friday's episode, we're going to be trying to form our first duchy. That's going to be obviously the key first thing to, to do, uh, seeing if we can improve our military 
and, and they'd be going for um, a kingdom title. I'm kind of really looking forward to it. It's all so kind of simple and so basic. So I just really, really different to, 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 to ruling kind of England in, in, the, uh, in the 11th century or something like that. Just totally uh, different kind of feel. Um, or even the, the Spanish, the Iberian struggle, you know, completely kind of like sort of different vibe to that. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. I hope you are. We're going to be back on Friday uh, beginning, beginning that. It's going to be a lot of warfare, I think, at the beginning. It's just really going to be about conquering the first few counties in order to establish some kind of uh, meaningful uh, realm. If you've, um, if you've got this far, surely this deserves a like and subscribe. So please do like and subscribe. Um, both of those things are, are really, really helpful. But also, you know, make some comments as well. You know, what would you like me to do? What do you think I'm doing wrong? What have I missed out? What have I not talked about? Um, you know, is the sound quality okay? Is the is the videos okay? All those, just make, make some comments. I also thought it would be just an excellent opportunity for me to just to show off to you what a really nice study I have. I mean, it's nothing special. I know everyone's got something like this in their house, but, you know, I'm proud of it. Uh, now it's actually Churchill study. Now I went to visit this. I took my children to visit this a couple of summers summers ago. The whole house, obviously not not just the study, um, but it is a spectacular study. I would absolutely die to have something like this where I could sit and work and plan things out. Um, anyway, um, I'm going to stop there. I hope you are going to look after. Yourself. I hope you enjoyed that, and hope you look after yourselves the next couple of days. And I will see you all Friday. Take care. Bye bye.